Doesn't what else? Oh, come, sorry, on, come on, come so, on. So how, how, how I Live Now, Saoirse Ronan, uh, of, fantastic of this parish, fantastic yes. actress. So story, this of course is based on uh, Meg Rossoff's award-winning book. Have you read the book? I have, I'm halfway through it because she sent me a copy. Oh, okay. Really? Yes. I did a, Ooh, I, get you. I did a, I did a podcast with her. Right. Uh, for a newspaper that you tend to read sometimes. Well, she, she won the chil that newspaper's yeah. Children's Prize in 2004. Yes, it's a, it's a hugely loved book. Yes, it is. And so in the film, story is, um, I haven't read the book, so I'm working entirely on the film, although there, you know, there is... Okay, fine. So, uh, she basically, she comes, she's American, she comes to the UK, she's uh, got these people that she's staying with, she doesn't want to join in with them, and she's a bit hoity and a bit uppity. Then she sort of develops this affection for Edmund, cousin Edmund, who, again, played by the absolutely ubiquitous George McKay, who's a terrific actor, really terrific. And if you were him right now, you'd be saying to your family, which film do you want to see this week? Because I'm in <laughs> all of them. And then World War Three breaks out. I want to see what the TV says. Piper. What's going on? Sally's not here, and I tried phoning Mum, but the phone's not working. Hey, guys, quickly, come and see this. The doctor, 15 different groups have claimed responsibility for this attack. And to repeat, we appear to be talking about a nuclear device which has killed tens, if not hundreds of thousands of people in and around the capital. And we're beginning to hear a fallout as far afield as Bristol... Why did the TV go off? Where's Mum? We've got to go and get Mum. Piper, shut up! Stop being a baby! Hey, it's scary. Leave her alone. Power cut. Whole house. Isaac, get the torch. Eddie, what's a nuclear? It's just something they say on the TV. So, you know, you kind of get the tone of it uh, from that. I and mean, Kevin McDonald is a very good filmmaker and, you know, is a very efficient... He knows how, he knows how to make a decent film. It seems to me, however, that they have to some extent struggled to find exactly at whom this is aimed. Apparently the novel was famously released in different covers to appeal to younger readers and to adult readers. Um, they've talked about, the, the producers of the, of, the, of the film have said, look, we are definitely playing this as a, you know, we're aiming it as a teenage romance, aimed at a teenage audience, which is fine. And obviously there's a kind of comparison between what's happening to Saoirse Ronan's character Daisy, and you know, for example, Katniss Everdeen in uh, in Hunger Games. You know, the, the civilized you suddenly in a world in which war is broken out. They're having to find their own way in the wilds. They're having to sort of draw on resources that they didn't know they had. The boys and the girls are separated, and and so all that's going on. And Saoirse Ronan is is terrific, and uh, Kevin McDonald's a very very good filmmaker. But there is also a sort of level of grimness of you know body piles and of threat and of sustained danger, which makes it a a, 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 a darker and more grown-up movie than, than perhaps it would be certainly darker and more grown-up than something like The Hunger Games. And it also means that you don't quite... You can't quite decide where it's playing its hand. My suspicion is that although it features strong performances and some very well-directed sequences, and I think it is an honest attempt to take a novel and put it on the screen, novels that work across a number of different audiences you mean you may have some experience of this but if you if you if, if, if there's a, a book that that can you know will, will appeal to teenage audiences and will also appeal to older readers when you visualize it it's a slightly different problem and i don't think they've entirely managed to solve that problem and i ended up thinking why am i why is this not feeling more gripping why is this not feeling more involving why is it why is this feeling like with all this stuff going on and all these performances that i admire that it's not as engaging as it needs to be. And I think it's that the, the balance between the dark and the light, the balance between the romance and the horror is not quite correct. I couldn't tell you how to make it correct because you know the last thing any film critic should attempt to do is to tell a filmmaker how to make their film better. But I found it to be an oddly directionless experience, which is particularly ironic since the whole thing that the central character learns during the course of the film is you have to be single-minded, you have to be singular, you have to decide to do something and put all your worries and your fears and your anxieties aside in order to concentrate on the goal immediately ahead. And when the central character is telling you that that's what's important, you kind of notice when it feels that the film isn't doing it.